Big Questions with the Dead Milkman. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Big Questions with the Dead Milkman. This week, um, I would like us all to talk about five things about playing your instrument. Um, they could be tips and tricks, uh, advice, uh, recommendations, uh, care and feeding, recommended auxiliary tools, et cetera, et cetera, whatever you want it to be. So I will begin, and of course, I'm going to talk about playing the drums. Um, the first thing on my list is, um, and I've mentioned this in some of my videos recently about uh, my new drum kit, you want to always carry a spare kick pedal and a spare snare drum. These are two pieces of equipment on your kick that um, have mechanical moving parts, and they can be prone to breaking. Um, you're whacking on that snare drum with your stick pretty darn hard, and you're kicking the kick drum pedal pretty darn hard. Things can uh, come loose. Um, you want to make sure to maintain those and make sure things are well lubricated and uh, working fine. Um, and also something pretty obvious, I hope, to most drummers is you want to be carrying more than one pair of drumsticks. Even if you're not prone to breaking sticks or dropping them when you're playing, showing up to a gig with one pair of drumsticks and something happens, that's the end of the show. <laughs> Unless you can play one-handed for the rest of the night, I don't think that's a good idea. The leopard. <laughs> uh, number two on my list is carry some basic tools with you, such as a drum key, duh. Um, a multi-tool is handy, like a Leatherman, um, preferably one that has like both Phillips and flathead screwdrivers and maybe a wrench. Um, I like to pack a small flashlight because stages are dark and sometimes things drop and you need to find them on the floor of the stage. Um, it also wouldn't hurt to carry some spare cymbal felts, the things that protect your cymbals from uh, um, wearing away around the center hole. Um, and also another thing that I like to carry a spare of is the hi-hat clutch. Um, which is the uh, piece of hardware that holds the top symbol of the hi-hat on the rod that goes up and down in the hi-hat. Sometimes these things can break or the thumb screw can be lost or fall off. It's always good to have a spare along with you. Um, number three on my list is use hearing protection early in your career. Um, I've been wearing head, uh, earplugs um, that let some audio in since the late 80s, early 90s. And I have lost some hearing, but I think I have um, stopped the quick decline of my hearing by doing that while I play shows. And I, I carry them with me all the time. Actually, when I go to see other bands in the audience, I wear earplugs too, because it, you know your hearing is part of your uh, job as a musician, and you want to make, make sure that you can um, hear things. Um, speaking of earplugs, number four, try to be respectful of the sound techs on stage when you're behind the kick getting ready for sound check and they're miking up the drums. You, you know, chances are they are, they are smart and wearing earplugs, but um, you don't want to be smacking cymbals and whacking your snare drum in their ear while they're trying to set up mics for your kit. Um, and also, <clears throat> Once you set up and get everything in place and you like test it out a little bit um, and play a little bit, um, stop. OK, it's not the time for you to practice. That time was when you were at home. <laughs> OK, um, the crew and the staff need to communicate during setup and sound check. And um, if you're making a racket, nobody is going to be happy about that. So be respectful of everybody's time. And number five, my last on my list is. If you're an opening band, you're playing in an opening band as a drummer and you're done your set, break your down your kit off stage after the kit, uh, after the set. Um, move your drums and your hardware off the stage and pack them away off the stage. You want to get your stuff off the stage as quickly as possible so that the next band or the headlining band can get ready for their set. Nobody wants to watch you put your cymbals and your drums in their cases. And um, that's something that you need to do off stage. So those are my five things that I would recommend um, as a drummer. Thank you, Dean. I didn't hear a word you said because for 40 years, I've been putting my head down by your kick drum. What? <laughs> what? Huh? What? 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 You said it's a quick drum. Well, that's good. Um, okay. So um, I'm Rodney Anonymous. 
handsome musician, uh, and I play the computer. There's actually a caustic song called I Play Computer. Uh, you should definitely check that song out. Um, you can see the computer back here. You can't really see what's on it, but you can see this awesome skull and candles, and let's face it, that's cooler. And it goes well with my Black Sabbath shirt. All right, so the first thing that you should know about the computer, this is not a Stradivarius. It is an instrument of the people. Every now and then I'll bump into somebody and they'll go, look at my violin. My great grandfather carved it from an oak tree that grew on our estate for 400 years. And I'm like, that is great. Not so much the violin. I couldn't give a rat's ass about that. It's just great that you've never known any adversity. Please don't try to write lyrics. No, the question you're probably asking is, well, if my great, great grandfather didn't chisel this laptop out of some rock he stole from Native Americans or whatever, where did it come from? Well, this is number two on the list. This was made by my son, Walter. Uh, now, I can, I can feel some skepticism here. I know it was made by my son, Walter, because when I opened it up to do some repairs, I found a note inside from Walter. Uh, it was addressed to whom it may concern, uh, and it stated that him and many other children were being held in a factory just outside of Beijing and being forced to make these laptops. Also, that if the reader of the note valued their sanity, they wouldn't look at Walter's browser history. They had him over there, by the way, because I he ha inherited my thumbs, uh, and they're perfect for making those little putting those little parts together. Uh, so his mother has them too. I I knew I shouldn't have made a baby with Megan Fox. Uh, okay, so the number three thing that you need to know about playing computer is that anyone can play computer. I know this because I can play the computer. Also because people are regularly telling me that anyone can play the computer. People will say to me like, well, anyone can play that, whereas I studied the Alpine areola at Juilliard for 400 years. So yeah, good, good for you there. Um, anyone should be able to play the computer, and that's the point of it. Um, making music shouldn't have to be difficult to be rewarding. And if this is how you make it, yeah, I'm completely down with you. So um, now, while anyone can play the computer, not everyone can succeed at playing the computer. And this is where it gets important. Are you, do you like to lead an artistic lifestyle? Are you not constrained by things like organization and schedules? All right, well, this is not not for you. You're not going to let society tell you what to do. This this is not for you. Um, there's quite a lot of time and work that goes into playing the computer. Uh, you have to spend a lot of time studying up on what type of hardware you're using, regularly checking it for updates because you don't want to go out on tour and this thing is not working with your hardware. Um, also, let's talk about data dictionaries. Every time I add a new sound, we make a record and we, and we do something, I have to go into a spreadsheet that's a data dictionary. Enter what song that sound is used for, what VST that sound lives on, and any other effects that I might use for it. Then I have to take that data dictionary and save it up to the cloud in, any, in case anything happens. I also have to put it on a thumb drive in case, um, you know, uh, for what, so I can take it with us just in case anything happens. So if something uh, changes or I have to download something from the cloud, um, I can put that in there and I can say, okay, well, this is what I need for this sound. So there is quite a bit of, of work that goes into it. Occasionally when I'm being a smart ass and, and somebody will say like, you know, well, anybody can play that. I'm like, okay, smart guy, show me how to layer a sound from two VSTs. And then they, they usually wet their pants. So that, that is, that's number four. Uh, and finally, the, the thing that we always talk about here is the computer will never replace real instruments. And I really wish that that wasn't true, but it is true. There will always be a place for real instruments out there, which is kind of a shame because I would, I would like to, to take a job away from some jazz flute player. I really would. I would like, you know, look, buddy, if I can get the same sound on here and you keep showing up three hours late for the, for the studio session, well, then I'm going to get the gig and, and that jazz flute is going to wind up getting shoved sideways up your ass. So right there, Picture that now. Uh, right there are, are five things that, that you need to know about playing the computer. I'm going to have talk, talk about playing the guitar, um, <laughs> which is what I play in The Dead Milkman. Um, <laughs> one thing I learned over the years is that you must occasionally replace the guitar strings, the strings on the guitar. <laughs> And 
Otherwise, they break or go out of tune or won't stay in tune. Um, I've I've learned that it when when we were on tour, I learned the sweet spot for um, changing strings was every third sh every three shows. After every three shows, I would change change strings, and I would almost never then break break a string. But if I did break a string, it usually would be the G string. Um, of the guitar, and and then I I would I would change the strings immediately after that because I I never I don't like the sound of the guitar with one new string and some strings that aren't quite as new I don't know. <clears throat> Point number two, um, after every show I've learned to wipe or playing playing the guitar for an extended period of time I've learned to wipe the strings down with a uh, cloth. <laughs> Like, like an old piece of underwear or t-shirt or whatever, a co cotton cloth, and it gets it gets an amazing amount of grime off the strings, and they stay in tune a lot better that way. Um, I learned this trick, believe it or not, on the first Dead Milkman tour when we played in Columbus, Ohio, and the sound man commented on the the flat sound of my guitar. He said, "You, you." do you ever clean your strings? He asked me, and I was like, what do you mean? And then he, sh he mm -hmm. literally showed me. <laughs> this is what you he should do. He pulled off his oh, underwear and he showed me. You know, I, yeah, I, I got a wedgie. And then he, you know, <laughs> Dean, you've, he, you've he shared rooms me with me. You see, I boil my keyboards after every show. <laughs> and that's another thing I was going to mention that too, is Dave, Dave Blood would actually boil his bass strings. I don't know after every show, but after, before every major thing we had to, yeah. It was a voodoo. Yeah, I would thing. do it like every single <laughs> string up and down, and then you can actually see the the stuff that it might might come off from your fingers. The um, number three is a tool that I find useful. It's a two in one tool that's great. I think any guitar player should take on take on to gigs on the road with them or wherever because. One part is used to wind the strings fast. It's called a speed winder, and the other part clips the ends of strings or clips the strings down the size. And go speed out. winder, go <laughs> speed winder. <laughs> yeah, because you don't want to sit there for ten hours turning the the, the ten pants. hours. Yeah, I know it's it's a long time. This this will get it done in like 20, 20 seconds. Um, number. That was number three. Number four, I like to play guitar every day if possible. And even if just for a little amount of time to keep, uh, I guess, arthritis from setting in or whatever at my old age. But the, the most common warm up that I, that I do, I don't even think about it anymore, is the riff to Do the Brown Nose by the Dead Milkman. And it, had, it serves a lot of purposes. <laughs> It's like it plays every string and it gets it gets your dexterity going and I don't know. I like the way it sounds. And I guess there's um number five. I learned I learned that keeping the inside of an electric guitar is just as important as keeping the strings clean. Um not too long ago I had this weird volume drop intermittent volume dropping problem at practice. Like the volume would suddenly go down and I'd go turn it up on the amp, then it would be louder. And then I thought, I, so I, I, I replaced the power supply of my text pedals. I'm thinking that that could be the problem, but it persisted. Then I replaced every single cable <laughs> that I had in my lineup. Um, and it was, it was still happening. And then I think Dean at the end of a practice said, do you ever look in the back of your guitar? Can you open it up? And he opened it up and we didn't see anything wrong with any of the any of the um wires but i don't know maybe remy rodney or somebody suggested uh contact spray i got home i had some contact spray i sprayed it and lo and behold it the problem didn't come back and a note from my son walter fell out <laughs> <laughs> that's number five that was number five that was keeping maintaining your guitar inside and out that's good advice um yeah, I, I too have a little like warm up thing I like to do, but I don't I don't usually do it like before a show or anything. 
But I do this thing where I go. And I just kind of go up and down using each finger on the first four frets of each string and then do different combinations of it. Um, it's good. I, I also like to, even before that, like a lot of times driving to practice, like at a red light or something, um, finger explosions. So you make fists and you, you just kind of, it, it, you do it kind of hard, but not like, so it's painful, but like, think of it like your fingers are exploding as fast as you can bring them to the, the ends. And actually that was, I learned that from, you guys remember Hoagie? Um, he was, he was teaching Junius drums for a little while years ago and said, you do that 35 times, which is a lot. And then you put your hands down to your side and you feel them tingle. And then you're like, ready. Um, is so, he still in Philly? I, I haven't seen him in a while. I actually saw him a couple of years ago, but I hadn't seen him in a while. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I think uh, Bunny still talks to him, but he's still active. I live in South Philly, and it's easy to get a hoagie down here. <laughs> um, I think his name is Chris or something, something like normal. I don't know. Um, let's see. So, oh, also uh, something that I learned about Dave through Joe was that Dave um, didn't like to play like open strings for notes. Like he would play like the fifth fret instead of playing like the open A, which at first I was like, oh man, I play the open strings a lot. And then I thought, you know what? It, it has a different kind of sound. And which leads me to another tip, which is um, like play as much as you can, like what, what I would say is like across the strings. So like, instead of playing all the way up here, like doing stuff up here, like play it down here. I, for years I played, um, if you love somebody set them on fire, like going up the neck here. And then one day I was like, hey, let me try it down here. And I barely have to move my hand here. It's nice. <laughs> um, and I put, I mean, I said play with a pick, but that's, you know, that could be controversial. Some people don't like the sound, I guess. And that, you know what, that's a good, um, if you let somebody set them on fire, actually don't play the verses with a pick because I feel like it gives it a different sound. There's a different like timbre. Um, so you would recommend bass players learn how to play both with their fingers and with a pick? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not even that really, really that good with my fingers, but I think it's good to to do that, I also do that with Bitch and Camaro, like the intro to Bitch and Camaro a lot is with the fingers. Um, but why I don't know why people always poo poo the playing with a pick if you're playing fast, like I don't know, it makes sense. <laughs> um, try to imagine Dee Dee Ramon not using a pick, I don't know. Um, and I also I would say buy a stingray bass, <laughs> it's I and I we just passed the uh, 15th anniversary of me having this bass, um, and it, that's by far the longest I've been able to keep a bass going. And every once in a while I have problems with it, but um, yeah, I used to just not take care of them. So take care of your bass, and if it's you know a nice one, keep it nice. And then I, as a joke, I also said tune it to D E A D. <laughs> Have you ever tried that and wrote a song? I I have tried it and I played it and it sounds weird. Although it's really the first three strings are E A D already, so you're really just adding another D. Um, but I, that was a reference to what is it? Wikipedia says that Dave Blood played. <laughs> it's just, I I mean I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be that surprised if if he did find a he way. He, he didn't, didn't do that. <laughs> he did not do that. <laughs> you think he had any like tips, Joe? Do you remember anything he would? Yes, remember? Dave. Dave Blood had a tip that he would call. He would constantly when people asked him for tips, he would say, "Cross on the green, never between." <laughs> yeah. That well, was what he would say. Yeah, Joe did mention he did boil his strings. I don't know. I think he boiled them. Uh. To, at least for his spare set, like, you know, 
if he and would play a set and then he would keep a spare set that he boiled. Also, it was weird because sometimes he'd be boiling the strings and he'd put some chicken in there and some onion. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a little bit of celery. I'm like, okay. All right. Yeah, you know. Why? <laughs> Um, oh, well, those are all great tips. Thanks, guys. I appreciate your answers. Now it's time for recommendations. So my recommendation this week is a YouTube video that was rec well recommended to me or pointed out to me by one of my colleagues at work. Um, most of our viewers are probably aware of the bass player Mike Watt, um, who has played with lots of different people. He's one of the founding members of the Minutemen and Firehose. He's played with Iggy and the Stooges. Um, he's done a lot of sort of avant-garde music. In fact, I'm seeing him this Saturday night, the, the very evening that this video will come out. I'm going to see him in uh, South Philadelphia on Broad Street with his band called uh, Missib. But anyway, uh, my friend pointed out this video, which came out like 14 years ago, and I had never seen Um some of you may be familiar with the Kelly Blue Book, which is a recommendation um, for pricing for new and used uh, vehicles. It's a well-respected uh, uh, tome that's out there. And I, they have a website and, and you can look up the value of uh, different vehicles by year and all that kind of stuff. And he actually <laughs> made a video with them, um, one of their young staff members who was a fan of, of Mike and his bands and his music. Um, they talked about Mike's Econoline van. And they actually had a new model, I guess, back in uh, 14 years ago. I'm, um, you know, they looked at the new model and Mike checked it out and everything. But uh, Mike sh uh, showed us the van that he was driving at the time, a Ford Econoline. And it's just a, a goofy little like eight minute video. Um, it's pretty funny. I recommend you check that out. Um, the Milkman also had a Ford Econoline van for touring back in the 80s and the early 90s. And uh, uh, I found a picture of uh, our beloved Dave Blood with uh, a, a promoter in Cincinnati. Um, so you can see a picture of that right now. Anyway, enjoy the video of the Econoline van. And originally we had toured in my parents' van, which my father said was called a fuck truck. <laughs> no. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, me poet, my father was. Um, okay. <laughs> so um, a bit of shameless self-promotion here first. Um, over on my channel, if you want to see me play a different type of computer, a groove box. Have you fellas heard about these groove boxes? The kids are just going gaga for him, like they are for that Fonzie character. But anyway, it's me doing a very spooky um, synth box jam. I just happen, I, I film myself occasionally doing them, and I, and I happen to have the skull sitting out, and um, it, the, the jam went spooky. It's just basically me just making stuff up as I go along uh, and just guessing. Uh, it's about six minutes long, and you get to see lots of my deformed thumbs in it. So now, now that makes it extra spooky. So if you want to check that out, it the song will gets stuck in your head. Um, people are complaining about that. Uh, up next, uh, other spooky music news and self-promotion. My radio, my latest radio show is available on demand. Uh, it's the October show, which is the extra spooky show. So if you need spooky music to drive around to uh, or just have in your house, that, that will do it for you. All right. And finally, it's time to pick this movie, this week's movie, using the impossible box Wait a minute. Maybe I'll leave this box alone. A little bit of Ivardens here for you there. God, that song gets into your head. It is an earworm. I'm just going to recommend uh, a double feature straight off. Uh, this The double feature is VHS 85, which came out in 2023, and Totally Killer, which came out in 2023. Uh, two very different films. VHS 95 is, of course, uh, 85 is found footage type film, uh, very dark and very spooky. Uh, and the other one is a comedy, and I mean a really good comedy. Totally, totally Killer is great. It's definitely worth it for the line. Let's not let this be the lesson. And it's just, it, they, they even explore like how lax security was on everything in the 80s. Two completely different films. Do them as a double feature. Do VHS 85 first. Uh, if you have Shutter, you can see that for free. And also, if you have Amazon, you can watch Totally Killer for free. But do those and again, See the dystopian hellscape that was the 80s. I want to recommend a CD by I Think Like Midnight, 
Um, that's a band that Dean is in. Um, I used to be in it. I'm not in it anymore. And maybe this album is is better for it. This is a good. It's a good <laughs> meaty big sound they have on this one. Um, it's their fourth full length studio album, fifth release altogether. Um, I really like these. A lot of these songs. A lot of them sound fami familiar to me. Um, <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> 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 but um yeah th th it's it's varied it's eccentric it's catchy sometimes it's something you can sink your brain into enjoying what what's it called joe oh i forgot microton microtonal honky tonk <laughs> is the name of it 13 instrumental songs 13 instrumental gems thanks I was hoping it was going to be called Punk's Not Dead, but Limbaugh is. I was like, come on, come on. <laughs> that would be great. Um, I would recommend uh, checking out this like solar eclipse that's happening on Saturday, which is the day that this airs. Um, but I think you're not supposed to look directly at it, so don't do that. Um, and I don't know where you live if you're watching, but... You have to look it up. I think there's a NASA made like a an interactive map where you can follow the path of it. So yeah, I, I kind of think that map. it'll be oh, mostly okay. more to the south of us here in Philadelphia, but I could be wrong. Yeah. Well, I live in South Philadelphia. It's perfect. <laughs> well, yeah. So, I mean, I remember seeing one a few years ago and it was cool. My 29th wedding anniversary is on Sunday, so clearly this solar eclipse is a portent of evil. <laughs> All right. Bye, everybody. It? Yeah. We, we cut a bunch of stuff you didn't get to see, people. It was basically us just filthy talk. Mm -hmm.